just because life is doom, and everyone wants to eat you, doesn't mean there's no hope. You need to look within, if you want to be free. Hello everyone, this is M from True Ink Pixel. Um, today I'm going to talk about something very special that we had the privilege of working on for Oddworld Inhabitants. Uh, as many Oddworld fans are already familiar with, the trailer that just played was an unaired promotional piece originally set uh, to air prior to the launch of Abe's Odyssey in 1997. It featured a character that is fairly prominent in the game's concept art. Uh, that character, of course, is the Shrink. Uh, a spider-like construct with a digital Madokan face. Within the lore of the game, they serve as physical companions for the captive Madokan queen, Sam. Now, the visuals for this promotional material, as well as the original game, were developed using Silicon Graphics workstations. Uh, these workstations cost in excess of twenty to thirty thousand dollars at the time, and used proprietary software and file formats. Most notably, the Alias Wavefront wire format, which utilized NURBS control points to define 3D surfaces. These differed fundamentally from a wireframe mesh in that. Together, these control points defined a curve that was generated at render time. Thus, model complexity was not dependent upon an architecture comprised of triangles or quads. Rather, it was defined by the mathematical interpretation of surfaces between this matrix of control points. Now, these were traditionally tools used in computer-aided design and motion picture VFX production with the primary goal of generating photorealistic images. These tools, in turn, allowed Oddworld inhabitants to create lifelike, organic 3D graphics that were well ahead of their time for the medium. In order to create the 20th anniversary dynamic theme, we were privileged to receive a copy of the original Wavefront model used to create that promotional video. And that's what you see on screen right now. Uh, it is in the original format and currently being viewed in the most current version of the Alias software, uh, which is now owned by Autodesk. Now, it was the process of migrating this archival data to our modern tool set uh, that we encountered our first major challenge. NURBS, by their definition, define curves that are infinitely precise. When translated into a mesh format, the surface complexity of the resulting model can be astronomically high. This is once again because NURBS describe exact curves, not a series of straight lines that approximate one. In this case, the resulting model, which you see on screen now, was in excess of 10 million polygons. While this is not an issue for pre-rendered data, indeed NURBS are still in use today for a multitude of applications. For a resource-limited real-time renderer, much more work had to be done. Thus we began the careful task of selectively isolating and rebuilding model components. This was done piece by piece in a process we not too ironically refer to as forensic optimization. The goal here is to preserve as much of the original data as possible, or failing that when resources demand, preserve the appearance of that original data as accurately as is achievable. This was made doubly difficult by the fact that the resulting exported model's geometry was not comprised of discrete volumes. Rather than a series of solid shapes, it was instead hundreds of surfaces that were simply approximated together and did not form a complete object. This was one of the limitations of working with archival data even when modern versions of the previous toolset are available, and is due to, in part, the techniques used to build the original model. Over the course of a couple of weeks, the final unified model began to take shape, and in a short period of time, we had the completed unified mesh running in the PlayStation 4 theme software at a much lower complexity than the NURBS forebear. Once we were satisfied with the translated and optimized model data, 
we began the process of creating new high-resolution textures and surface materials, and ultimately created the scripting, audio, and animation which would be incorporated into the final theme. What follows is the completed sequence, running in real time on a PlayStation 4 within the theme environment. You can subscribe to this channel if you want to be kept updated on future themes. Uh, additionally, we post works in progress to this channel uh, so you can provide your feedback on what you want to see on the marketplace. Lastly, uh, and as always, thank you for your time and support.